guys. Hello, hello, hello. Here we are at the cottage, ready to sew a drawstring bag. I am, I wonder if I can just get that down a little bit more so you can see a bit more of the table. Bear with, guys. So I chop my head off. No, yeah, that's fine. We're just getting an iron and then, um, so I've come on a bit early. Realise I didn't have my iron ready. Here we are. Let's plug him in. actually see how many of you are online but I can see there's a f I think there's a few that are it's quite hard for me to read hey hey there um so I'm here at the cottage today working um um from from home essentially here we we're actually preparing for a big photo shoot for uh, Lisa Comfort Home um hello guys hi let's see where everyone's from so hi some of lovely names I recognize we've got Lorian in Oregon I thought, I think someone just said they're from Stockport. Where else have we got? Who is where in the world? Norwich, hello, Luton. Oh, hi, Tina. Uh, oh. North Carolina, Northampton, Northumberland, Hamburg, Cornwall, South Africa, Yorkshire. Rosie's in London. <laughs> oh, Essex. Yeah, it's very wet, isn't it? Clacton, Horsham, Islington. Gothenburg. Oh my goodness, I love this. <laughs> this is brilliant. What an incredible variety of locations we're at today. Cornwall, USA, Maryland, Atlanta, USA. Oh, hi guys. I've got a cup of tea. Anyone else drinking a cup of tea? Hi, Debbie and Darby. <laughs> Canada as well. Yeah, I'm drinking tea. Who's drinking tea? Who's drinking coffee? Oh, hi, hi there, Helen from Toulouse. Bridget, drinking tea, yes. Anyone else in the tea gang with me? Yeah, fruit of the forest. Ooh, not heard of that. Coffee, lots of coffee. Licorice spice tea. Oh, Lorianne, that sounds gorgeous. Might have to try that one. Hot chocolate. Oh my goodness, it's such a hot chocolate day, isn't it? It's really rainy today. Oh, I'm going to have to go and get some hot chocolate. Thank you. That is such a good idea. Yeah, this is my third cup of tea today. So um, yeah, maybe I should move on to uh, um, a, uh, a cup of hot chocolate afterwards. One of my, I was so first, I think I can't remember if I've talked to you guys about this, but sorry if I have. But I remember at, on New Year, Christmas Eve, Last year, I really wanted to start a little tradition with Jasmine where we'd have a hot chocolate on Christmas Eve and we'd put the bits out for Father Christmas, a mince pie and um, and a carrot. And uh, basically, um, we've, um, yeah, she didn't like hot chocolate. I put whipped cream on it, I put marshmallows. She didn't even like the marshmallows. I'm gonna try again this year. <laughs> Ooh, pumpkin spice hot chocolate is fab. Ooh. Ooh, not heard of that. Te Luce Lel, Christmas tea. Ooh, lovely. Oh, someone's gonna have some lunch, yep. I'm gonna have my lunch afterwards. That's gonna be, um, I'm looking forward to having some soup, I think. Right guys, so we're here to make the drawstring bag. Um, we, um, we've got Rosie in London, who's gonna be answering your questions. Um, if you have any questions, this is the first time I've done a sew along. I oh, know it's the second time I've done one from here at the cottage and the internet isn't as great. Um, I am in a rural location. Um, so um, if it cuts out, hopefully we'll be able to go um, onto, um, onto my 4G, which is fine. So fingers crossed that'll be all right. Oh, Lorianne's bought the new coat. Oh, lovely to see that. Anyway, so this is going to be a sew along that will be wonderfully easy for those of you who can sew already and hopefully be a nice little relaxing project that you could make. Um, and it's a great one for making presents if you're thinking already about Christmas presents. I feel like this year people need more thoughtful presents more than ever. So I'm certainly going to be giving everybody something handmade, even if it's not the biggest part of their present. But I do like the idea of giving presents in a drawstring bag because then it's a sustainable, reusable wrapping. It looks great. And also then they've got a nice handmade something from me. Unless they're getting something big and then I don't think 
In fact, we're thinking of getting Jasmine a bike, so I don't think I'll be getting uh, doing a drawstring bag for that. Um, I'm hoping, though, that we'll be also um, encouraging, maybe not live here, but uh, later on um, when this is up on the site, um, on the YouTube channel, that there'll be some beginners having a go at this. So I will be explaining things um, in a more detailed way than I do normally, because this is something that we want beginners to be able to have a go at. So those of you who are uh, already big sewers, um, I hope you will be supportive of anyone on here who is a beginner. Do we have any beginners? Hi Kim, hello. Are there any absolute beginners on here? If there are, raise your hand. Oh yeah, that's what I'm trying to do guys. Keep everyone together. Oh, you're going to try and sew along at the same time, Helen. Wonderful. Um, oh, lovely. Thanks guys for all these lovely comments. It's so nice. Keep them coming. This is what makes them special, talking to each other. Oh, Emily's here for her first sew along. Hi, Emily. Welcome. Um, oh, did someone's, Siobhan's been sewing for years, but still considers herself a beginner. Oh, and someone else who hasn't sewn for years. And we have got a beginner. Hi, Susanna. Oh, wonderful. Oh, well, those of you are, who have been here, let's say hi to all of the newbies joining us. Welcome to our sewing family online on this wet day. Right, okay, I'm going to talk through through what we need um, for this. So um, we have need our fabric. So if you are um, going to be making this, we have got a pattern that you can now buy on our site. Um, I believe I asked Rosie this before, I've already forgotten. I think it's three pounds. The link will be going up shortly to it and we'll also pop the link below. So um, for anyone who wants to um, uh, a pattern to follow then you can buy that those of you that have sewn um, and are quite confident in making your own patterns then you would be able to do that for whatever size the main thing is you've got two rectangular pieces that's the body of your um, bag and you've also got the channel pieces that is two and they're as wide um, as this bit okay so oh thank you Laurie <laughs> that's lovely welcome in new sewists and then you're also going to need either some ribbon or I've actually got some cord um, or piping cord. But this is kind of cord that we had left over from our Lucy dress, actually. So I've got that. You're going to need a safety pin as well. We had a hilarious uh, <laughs> drama because we were not, not really a drama, but we didn't have a safety pin here at the cottage. And so um, Ada, who's working here painting our furniture for Lisa Comfort Home, had to dash out to the village shop and uh, bless them. They knew, I think she said, oh, we're about to do this live thing on YouTube and, and we need a safety pin. And anyway, apparently in the little local village shop, they're all running around trying to find it for us. And then they were concerned. They said the internet's not very good in the village today. So anyway, fingers crossed it'll be fine. So you'll need one of those. We'll also need pins. I've got my pins on a magnetic pin dish. Those of you who are sewing will know the wonder of these things. Those of you that are new to sewing may not have discovered them, but basically it's magnetic. So if you have all your pins on the table, you can just do that. It picks them up really easily. I've also got my cup of tea. We've got an iron um, with water in it because we're going to use a nice hot setting with steam to make sure our seams are really crisp. Sewing machines all threaded up. I've gone for a thread colour that will match the main body of my fabric. I haven't got any small snip scissors, so I've just got my big fabric scissors, but that's fine. It doesn't really matter. You just need scissors to be able to cut your thread. So we've already cut um, these bits out, and the fabric that I'll be using is very exciting because it's launched today. We thought we would do it out of this. This is actually a home soft furnishing fabric that is... Um, launched um, from Lisa Comfort Home, which is my other business that's all about homewares and having a go at making things for your home, um, not just sewing related things. And this fabric is from our new monochrome collection and it's this lovely spotty fabric and it's the perfect weight for a drawstring bag. But I should say soon Rosie will be adding up some kits for the drawstring bag. So if you are just wanting to have everything easily sent out to you, um, then we'll be putting together some kits and you'll be able to get those. Um, I think they're going to be £7.50, is that right, Rosie? And I think they'll be going up later. Oh, thank you, Rosie. She's just put up a link to them. And obviously there'll be a link in the description box as well. So 
This is, I've got two pieces of those. I'm going to put those to one side and I'm going to take my um, main body pieces and I'm going to put them right sides together. Yeah, Rosie's just con con concerned, <laughs> confirmed. £7.50 um, for those um, kits. Okay, so we're placing it right sides together. Uh, right sides together is a term that we use a lot in sewing and it basically means we're putting the, in, the good bits of the fabric together. So you're sewing the thing, whatever it is, inside out. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pin all the way around. So we're gonna go down to the long sides and across one of the shorter sides, but we're not gonna pin the top because we certainly don't wanna sew the top, otherwise we'll not get anything in the bag. When I pin something like this, I like to pin horizontally. So I'm left-handed, so I'm pinning that way, but if you're right-handed, you might pin that way. It doesn't really matter which way. Um, but yeah, the, um, the going in like that, and that way it makes them really easy to take out once you start sewing. So that's what I'm thinking about, is thinking about how easy the pins are gonna be taken out, another duff bent pin, um, as you're sewing. So try to keep um, it flat on the table. I'm lifting it up because um, um, it, I want to be able to show you guys, but you don't have to worry about that, so keep everything flat on the table. There we go. All the way around. I meant to say at the beginning, guys, I realised um, that the only thing that I have with me here at the cottage is something that will be, something It's going to be very similar to this that we're bringing out next year. So you guys are getting a bit of a sneaky peek. But this is a really lovely um, blouse. Um, I've got it on, I'm wearing black actually, which is an all black, but it's like a nice loose blouse that kind of comes up. For those of you who are dressmakers watching this, you're getting a sneaky peek of a pattern that's coming next year. I probably shouldn't have said that, should I? But I can't resist. And I also feel like you guys are the VIPs on here. I'm gonna give you the inside gossip, what's happening at Sew Over It. <laughs> um, right, okay. So, pinned like that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at the top right hand. Sorry, Rosie, giving away all our secrets. <laughs> you can't stop me, Rosie. You're not in the room next door today. Um, so, we're gonna stop, to start the top right hand. Um, side and we're going to be lining up with the number 10 on the machine okay so the number 10 stands for 10 millimeters or centimeter and the seam allowance is a centimeter on this project so if you're over in the states a centimeter also equates to around three-eighths of an inch so that's going to be the seam allowance for sewing this together and that basically means it's from the edge of the fabric to where we're going to sew um, so that we're not sewing right on the edge so then it could come undone but also so that we sew in a uniform way so that the project ends up being the size that it should be once it's sewn otherwise if we don't set that some people might choose a bigger seam allowance or a little smaller seam allowance or they might do one seam allowance on one side and a different one on the other side and then things that don't end up looking great at the end right so i'm going to start by doing a few stitches forwards and then I'm going to do a few stitches backwards, okay? And those few stitches backwards are securing the start of the seam. So they're making sure that it doesn't come undone. It's like tying a knot in the thread. If you were sewing a button on by hand, you'd tie a knot in your thread. That's what the sewing machine is uh, doing when it reverses. It's not actually sewing at tying a knot. It's better than that, but it's, it's securing it so it won't come undone. So as I'm going along the side here, I'm thinking about the raw edge. I'm looking at that and making sure that that stays on my guideline on the base of the machine, okay? Oh, Deirdre, making it with French seams. Well, that's something to aspire to. French seams are a really lovely way of finishing something so that all the edges are encased. We're not gonna worry about that though today. Um, if you're new to sewing, you can think about doing that maybe um, in the future. We're going to be doing a zigzag. I've decided not to use my overlocker, which is a special kind of machine that we use to finish the, the, the edges. I'm not going to do that because I feel like most beginner sewers don't have an overlocker. It's something you tend to get once you're really into your dressmaking. So I'm coming up to the edge here and I am about a centimetre from that bottom edge along there. 
So I'm going to stop, I'm going to put my needle into the fabric by turning the hand wheel at the side of the machine here. Some snazzy machines will have a button that you can just press and it goes thump and it pops the needle in. The main thing is the needle needs to go all the way into the fabric and then we lift up the presser foot and then we pivot around. Okay, anyone who used to watch Friends, the uh, series, every time I say the word pivot, all I can think of is that scene when Ross is trying to get that sofa up the stairs and he's like, pivot, pivot, pivot. And then someone says, what's pivot mean? <laughs> pivoting is when putting a needle in and then pivoting the fabric, turning the fabric around. So if when you turn it around, um, it's then lined up the next edge with the number 10, then you know you stopped um, at the right point. If it's gone over, you can always just go back, you can reverse back again, or you can come forwards, whichever way you need to go, so that when you're, you're lined up for the number 10. So down again along here. And another tip for, for anyone new to sewing, don't rush through something like this. Um, take your time on the sewing machine. Once you feel more confident on the sewing machine, it's actually easier to sew straight at a bit of a speed because there's less time for the fabric to move. But if you're, um, if you're brand new to sewing, then you don't want to go too fast. Oh, we've got some people there saying they understand Ross and the pivot. I think that possibly was one of the funniest scenes ever in Friends. Um, okay, so I'm back at the next corner now and I'm going to pivot again. So I'm stopping a centimetre before the um, edge and then I'm going to lift and pivot. But before I'm going to pivot, I'm going to have a cup of tea. A cup of tea, a sip of tea. Mm. A sip of Yorkshire tea. Right. So lift up and pivot round. Okay, at the end then I did another reverse, I did it very speedy so you might not have noticed but I pressed the reverse button and I went back on that. And we're going to cut our tails off because we don't want them to be dangling and getting in the way and making our project messy. And that's already a bag kind of sewn up in its basic form. So what we're going to do now is we're going to finish those edges. Now you can do that with an overlocker like I was saying, you can do that by French seams like Deirdre's doing. Or you can do that with um, a zigzag stitch. You could also use pinking shears, which are those scissors that have like a ziggy zaggy edge. So um, I'm gonna go undo a, um, a uh, zigzag stitch on this machine. Um, and what you want to make sure is that when it's gonna go like this from left to right, and when it goes over the on the right, you want it to go just over the edge so that it's wrapping that frayed edge so it's going over it if it sits within the kind of seam allowance and doesn't wrap over the edge then it will continue to fray until that point so the perfect position is for it to sit right there just on the edge just over the edge and you're fine with a fabric like this which is more of a canvas weight and um, that it doesn't distort the seam allowance but if you're using a lighter weight fabric what can happen with a zigzag stitch is it can bunch that bit of fabric together and you can alter that to an extent with a bit of fiddling or with your sewing machine tension but I usually say especially to beginners don't worry about it because it's uh it's not actually it doesn't really matter, it still looks neat and it still serves the purpose of stopping things from, um, from fraying. Okay, so we're pivoting again, guys. And again, the same idea, you want to stop ahead so that when you pivot, you're lined up to sew in the right position along the next edge. Any of these little bits of fraying that are sticking out, you can always trim them off. The bits of fraying fabric, you can trim them off afterwards. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that when I'm pivoting, the needle's on the left. 
Okay? left again there oh no I'm at the I was about to say across the top that'd be no good no 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 right we need to reverse now <laughs> getting carried away okay that's it done okay so now those edges you really aren't going to see it but I will try and show you you see the zigzag that won't fray now it won't go any further okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to move on to our smaller pieces that will create our casing for our ribbon or for our um, cord, piping cord. So what we've got to do is we're actually going to finish the edges of these just as they are. So we're going to do a zigzag down each edge sort of singly. So we're not stitching anything together. We're just going to work on the individual pieces. So we're going to do a zigzag, zigzag, zigzag down there and the same down there. So exactly the same position as what we did before. And then again on that side. I've just thought, Rosie, I've said it's a centimetre because it always used to be a centimetre, but we have recently made sure that we're really uniform on our patterns and that mainly our seam allowance is a centimetre and a half so I think in the instructions it might have said a centimetre and a half for our seam allowance it doesn't really matter all that's going to happen is mine will end up a little bit bigger but if you are following our pattern it might have said a centimetre and a half sorry guys I think that's a classic sew along fail for me isn't it I'm always getting my seam allowances confused all confusing you guys. Okay, yeah. As long as you keep the same seam allowance, it won't be misshapen in any way. It will just be um, slightly bigger, slightly smaller. Okay, so we're going to now trim these away. It's 1.5 centimetres. <laughs> well, we're doing our own version of a centimetre. Um, it does mean that when we, we're going to he essentially hem these edges, these little short edges of these casing pieces, so we need to make sure that they follow that seam allowance. So what we're going to do now on the iron, and I'm going to see if I can pull it so that you guys can see. Oh, hello, good morning in Chicago. Um, we are going to um, fold over a centimetre. Now, if you're new to sewing, you might not know what a centimetre looks like, you might not be able to visualise it, so always have a tape measure with you and you can just check that. So if you're uh, working with inches, that's three eighths of an inch. Okay, so I'm just folding it over to the wrong side, so just like that, and then the same on the other side. And this is essentially hemming these edges, it's gonna, we're going to stitch these down once we've ironed them. Um, sneeze bear with me Ooh. Ooh. excuse me excuse me thank you sorry um okay so now we are going to stitch those down so we need to thank you Kim. we need to stitch down so that um that that's anchored down so we need to stitch down just I'd say anywhere between five and seven millimeters so the main thing is that you're stitching it less than the centimeter seam allowance because if you line up and you're stitching a centimeter you're going to risk not actually catching that inside edge 
but I'd work from this side, so work from the right side, line up your folded edge with uh, one of the little markers that's less than the 10. So ideally more than five millimeters, um, sorry, no, as in more five millimeters or more, you don't really want to be doing it less than that, otherwise it's gonna flap back. So. Our little reverse as well. Okay, so we've got to do this on all of our edges that we've just folded back. So we're essentially hemming those now. I'm actually finding the edge of the foot is a really good marker for me on this because it's falling at oops, um, just fall, it's sitting just under a centimetre, just under my three eighths of an inch mark, which is great. Another, I'm just trying to think of all the uses you could use for drawstring bags. There's so many things. I mean. I think I've talked about um, before about how you can make them for different size things in your um, your bags. If you had like headphones or cables or hairbrushes and lipsticks or whatever you wanted to keep things separate in your bag, you could do that. Um, I use mine for when I go away. Um, dirty, okay, you can put your dirty laundry in one, you can put shoes in another. I also quite like to put your kind of underwear and your smalls in one, like when you, you're packing, so you're clean things, so that when you're grabbing it, you can just grab the kind of underwear bag. Um, but yeah, you really can have a drawstring bag for so many things, and they do help you live more organised. Um, right, so we've done that now, okay, on both of those, they've, bo they've been hemmed at both the short ends, so now what we're going to do is fold them. Um, oh, Claire's is going to be a peg bag. That's a good idea. Great. We're going to fold them wrong sides together like that. And we're lining up the raw edges along there. Per project bag for knitting. Oh, yes, absolutely. I'm not a knitter. I mean, I can knit, but I'm not a big knitter. But I know that knitters do have lots of projects on the go, don't you? And you have them in little individual bags so that you can keep your needles and stuff together. So, yeah. That's, um, that's a great idea. Okay. I think so as well, Deirdre. Lovely to use for gifts. So we've got those two now done. Okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to turn this the right way around. Our bag. And we're going to just push those corners out as best we can. We haven't, for those of you that know about cutting off corners, we've not done that on this project because we need to, um, we, we didn't want to cut through because we zigzagged. So I didn't cut the corners off instead because we were zigzagging. But you, what you can do when you get to sort of this kind of thing, toy storage, storage bags, yes, crochet great for gift bags. I think a lot of you are with me on the old gift bag idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pin in there and grab the seam and I'm just going to tease it out. You could also use um, closed scissors and push out from there but I find that this technique really helps tease that corner out. Okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press. Can you see the edges are all quite bouncy and they're not very very crisp. Okay. Okay. Cross stitch bags, that's a good one. I'm sorry, someone just said something in French. I do speak French, but I couldn't I couldn't quite see what you were saying there. So sorry about that. Um so now what I'm gonna do is roll. I'm gonna have to do this actually. Just lick and get a bit of grip on my fingertips there, and I'm gonna roll like this. I'm gonna roll the seam in my hands and get it right on the edge so that I give it a nice crisp edge like that. Okay? So rolling like that. 
and then ironing flat. Rolling and then pressing. And then we're rolling again. And pressing. Okay, there we go. So that's now um, looking like a, a bag, hopefully, to you. So now what we're going to do is we're going to stitch on our casing pieces one side at a time. So if you open it up and you're going to take one of them and you're going to place it right up to the folded edge of the casing where we hemmed it, it's sitting right on the edge um, in line with the seam of the bag and then I'm pinning through all the layers okay and then the other end it will line up as well so I'm going to pin that side and then I'm going to go and pin the other side I'm just fill in the pins so that that's a good amount of pins I wouldn't do any more than that and then again on this side what you'll have to do is decide, it doesn't really matter which side, but you have to decide to pull the seam allowance to one side inside the bag so that you make sure that that sits flat. So it means that there'll be quite a bulky bit on one of these. Oh look, so bulky on this that I'm almost breaking, bending my pin. Okay. that happens oh gosh easily done guys especially when you're using um what do you how would you line the bag oh if you wanted to line the bag what you would do is you would make another bag um and then you could probably machine tack this in place so kind of um, or machine baste it and then you'd make another bag and you basically drop it inside stitch it all together around the top and then put that tuck that back inside so you kind of you you, you drop stitch them in right sides together two bags together and you'd sandwich the casing okay so we're going to now sew around that um i've been using a centimeter and a half seam allowance um but i believe rosie I'm sorry, I've been using a centimetre seam allowance, but I believe for this it's probably better if we do use a centimetre and a half, otherwise we're going to... <sighs> yeah, I have to hurt myself, don't I, guys? Um, um, otherwise, um, we'll make our casing bigger than we intended. But Rosie, do you want to tell me if that's what we say before we maybe have changed it to a centimetre along the top, or is it a centimetre and a half? I have a sip of tea whilst we're checking. centimetre and a half so I'm going to do that because I don't want my casing to be too big so I'm going to use the centimetre and a half seam allowance. I'm starting at one of the sides now we don't hi Tina um, we don't need to um, reverse because what we're going to do is we're going to sew around this in one continuous seam and when we come back to the beginning we're going to go over at reverse uh, overlap essentially there so I'm just going to go straight on and sew without reversing I'm lining up with the 5 eighths of an inch or 1.5 centimetre seam allowance and you'll see that I've slotted the bag onto the end of the machine so that I'm not accidentally sewing the whole thing closed just watch the pins as you get round they can be a little bit vicious as I've just proved Yeah. Okay. 
okay I'm coming back round to the join here where there's, there's the two ends that the casing meet and I'm just going to sew straight over you don't need to stop and start again you just sew in a continuous seam He goes, he goes, he goes. Coming back round to where I began. Okay, I'm just holding this nice and flat as I take the last pin out. I just want to make sure. Oh, it's getting a bit caught there, so I'm just going to release that. It's got stuck under the machine. And then. I'm coming round and I need to make sure that I meet where I began, overlap and reverse. There we go. So that is now stitched on. Da, 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 da. So let's trim off all our threads. We now need to do a bit of over, um, overlocking or zigzagging along this edge here because we don't want... Um, I'm just trimming off those threads. We don't want that to fray when we've made the effort of nothing else fraying by it zigzagging. So we're going to zigzag around that top edge. So, or overlocking if you've got an overlocker. We're basically just finishing those seams. Often what it will say in some instructions for sewing is finish your seams. So if you're finishing your seams, it basically means you need to stop them from fraying. So whatever method you use. So I'm just going to start at one side here and again go around in a zigzag continuously and then I can overlap at the end and reverse then. So last, was it, I think it was this time last year, we had a really fab event that we did with making drawstring bags that was just wonderful. So we worked with a local um, charity, um, it was a women's refuge and we basically got our local London based customers, asked them to come in and sew drawstring bags with us. So we provided all the material, we had them cut out already and we sewed up drawstring bags and also our makeup bag which we're making next week which is our zip toiletries bag. We sewed, made those up and then we filled them, the makeup toiletry bag, we filled with toiletries and makeup and things for women that had come to the um, refuge and often without anything with them they've had to escape a, um, a kind of unsafe um, situation at, at their homes and so they're turning up and they don't have you know the things that they might need they don't have any nice moisturizers or cleansers or so we'd fill them up with those and some of the customers brought some bits and we went and bought a load of stuff and then the drawstring bags um, we filled up with toys because often the women will be coming with children. So then it meant um, for the local refuges in our area, there would be, um, when the women and the children arrive at the refuge, they'd be given a toiletry bag of goodies and they'd also be given a drawstring bag. Um, and we managed, in just a day, we think we did, I think I, think I remember, because I drove them to the offices of the, the refuge and I, we took like, I hope, three big or two or three big um, IKEA bags. Anyway, I've been thinking about it and how I'd like to continue that remotely in some way. Um, we need to have a think about how we could do it, but whether we ask customers wherever they are, I mean, obviously it would mean you'd have to pay for the postage, but using your scraps, making those things up, and then we could um, we could put them, we could, we could get, you know, we could fill them up for you. So we could ask everyone to send them in um, and uh, make them up at home with your scraps and then we could fill them up. We will kind of buy all the bits to put in them and that way we can still do it for our local refuge. So I'll talk about that. I need to obviously speak to the team about how we can do this um, and, and, and organize it. But I just think that I know a lot of you, especially those of you in the UK who could um, ship at a more reasonable price. Um, we all have sewing scraps of fabric around at home um, and we could all have a go using putting them and sending them in um yeah we could exactly we could make it as a little event actually couldn't we where we're all just sewing virtually together that would be really nice um so yeah let's think about how we can do that guys i think we should try and do that this year because you know i know from the news here in the uk that you know there is domestic violence has unfortunately been something that has really gone up 
Yes. Aww. Right. Hello. Hello in Australia. Aww. Right. I've just, because I was chatting, classic me, what I've done is I'm, I've just done it without telling you, but basically I've just gone back over, reversed, um, so overlapped and then reversed. Okay. Um, cut off all your threads. We're getting close to the end, guys. So now what we're going to do is we're going to iron it so that the seam allowance is going down towards the bag. So I'm going to slot it on the end of my ironing board and I'm going to press that. And then I'm going to move it along. So lovely to see so many of you were keen to, to support in that um, idea about the Locals Women's Refuge. So thanks guys and you'll hear more from me on other sew alongs and on our social media channels. I'll speak to the team about it. Won't we, Rosie? Let's get it on our meeting agenda next week and uh, we'll, we'll organise how we can do that. Whether that's a virtual event where we can all be sewing them together, um, like a coffee morning almost. I think that would be really lovely. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So I've pressed that all the way around. Okay. It's now looking like that. Inside, the seam allowance is going down. Okay. Um, and we are now going to stitch that in place with the top stitching. So we're now going to top stitch two to three millimetres on the bag, but from the join there, so that holds the casing seam allowance down. So that will be with a straight stitch. So if you get it under the machine, and if you can move your uh, needle, what I find easiest with this sort of thing is to line up the middle of your foot and put that right on the seam join between the casing and the top of the bag and then move your needle over. Okay, so I can move my needle over to the left and that way, that way we can, um, whoops, that's it. Um, and that way we've got a really nice lining up point. So my, what I'm doing here as I'm sewing along is I'm lining up the middle of the foot with the seam but the needle is on the left, so it's sewing two to three millimetres from that seam. And what this stitch is doing is it's anchoring the seam allowance inside the bag to keep that seam allowance facing down and the bag is looking nice and neat. Now my mind's going on this drawstring bag and toiletry bag idea and whether whether we can find um, one of our um, a partner in the US or maybe in Australia we could contact one of our stockists and see if they could do something similar for their locations so that you guys who those of you who aren't in the UK could still take part in it but without having to uh, yeah you could work with somewhere local in your your country Right, I'm now back at the beginning, so I'm reversing there, making sure I've overlapped where I began, I'm doing a nice reverse, and then we can trim that off. And that's the sewing done, guys. Those of you that are new to sewing will have realised from this project that you actually, you're doing a lot of ironing and pinning and cutting as well as sewing. They're all skills that you have to practise as well. Oh, isn't that exciting? But now the very, very exciting bit comes, guys, because we're now going to put the cord in. So, I don't know how much I've got here, but basically, hopefully I've got enough, because what we need, we need two cords so that we can pull it like that. If you don't have enough, you can just have one in, and then you can just pull it from one side. But if you want to be able to pull from both sides, you're gonna need um, two, and they need to be, so, if I just want before I cut it, actually, I'll just check. Yeah. So I've got my length of cord here. I'm just going to chop that into two. And then it's easy for me to show you this. So then your cord, you need to double it like that. And it needs to be, uh, it needs to be bigger than the um, top of your bag. So that when you thread it through and when you pull it. Oh, well done, Helen. Yay, that's amazing. You kept sewing with me. Sorry, I'm quite a speedy sewer, so I know sometimes that's quite um, hard to keep up, but I'm glad that I went at a pace that you could follow today. Um, 
So they need to be extending so that when you open the bag, the bag can actually open properly rather than it being bunched because these are too small. So then we're going to get the uh, safety pin, which kindly the village shop has uh, made sure that I could have for today. So sweet that they were doing that. Um, and then I'm going to thread it through. Okay. So threading it through with my safety pin. So we're going to do one from one side and one from the other side. No, guys, that's so lovely to see you all supporting each other there. Oh no, I can feel it's coming undone. Oh no, guys. Oh no, we have a <clears throat> we have a slight drama. Look, <laughs> it's almost coming undone, but I think we've anchored it. I think it's not going to come off. That is the pain with this um, cord, is it separates out. Ribbon is, it looks really good. Certainly, especially with this fabric having the nice striking black cord. But I do need to tie a knot in it to stop that from happening. But I didn't want to tie a knot in it at this point because it would, um, um, if we tied a knot in it, it would, uh, it would be harder to thread through. So there we go. Pulled through on one side. Oops. Okay, I'm going to take the safety pin out. And before that gets any worse, I'm just going to tie a knot in that. Oh my goodness, guys, I'm, uh, I'm boiling. I'm boiling. Um, of course, I've got a radiator pumping out the heat from behind. You'd love to know how long I've been sewing for. Well, I've been sewing since I was about eight or nine. I'm now 38. Oh my god, that's that's 30 years. <laughs> okay, and then I'm gonna cut that. I'll do another one on this side. So it looks actually, yeah, just do that on that side and then we'll I've got to then knot it a further time, but I need to knot these ends, otherwise if I don't they will fray. Did I use a certain needle? I have size 14 on my machine at the moment, which is kind of a good, it's not super heavy, but 11 would be too fine for this kind of fabric. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same again, but we're gonna go from this side. I'm gonna go the other direction. Sorry, from this side. So we can pull them both like that. Yeah, I don't want it to do that separating again. Guys, I've got a very lovely uh, thing to be getting on with today. Again, <laughs> giving you another one of our secrets. <laughs> Telling you another thing. Don't tell me off, Rosie. Um, but this afternoon, um, I've got a lovely afternoon. We are doing lots of painting and bits and bobs of furniture for Lisa Comfort Home. But whilst that's going on, I'm actually going to be making some Chris a Christmas garland because we are planning to do an a similar thing what we were talking about um, this sort of charity event but this is going to be a special big Christmas sew along on Zoom that we can all be sewing something festive together so um, yeah I'm very excited about that we're also looking into having um, if you were to um, join in with it you would um, you'd be getting um, <laughs> my dad has basically sent us in his mulled wine recipe so we'll send you uh, dad's mulled wine recipe and also we've got some a really lovely truffle recipe from a lovely, tr I guess she's a baker really. Um, and so you can basically make your truffles, make your mulled wine. I'm going to suggest that we all wear something festive, whether that's handmade or just a Christmas jumper. And then we're going to do a big Christmas make along. Make along, sew along, um, but on Zoom so we can all see each other. Oh, so excited by this. So excited. Anyway, I've got to actually first make the garland so that we can photograph it um, and then we can start talking about it. But you heard it here first. Again, she probably shouldn't have. <laughs> right, we're almost through there. Has it, please don't, please don't disintegrate on me when we're so close to the end. <laughs> oh, glad guys you like the sound of that. Okay, so we are going to tie a knot in that. So that that doesn't fray, I'm going to do the same on that. Yay, guys. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, well, that's what I was hoping. I was actually, I mean, I 
I won't unfortunately be with my parents at that point, but you know, I kind of thought, you know, if I was, I'd be like, or whoever you have that you can be with at the moment, they could be joining in too. Cause it's, you know, it's gonna be a hand sewing thing guys. So get festive together. Um, and we can all just be nice to see you all. Oh my, I'm so excited by the idea of me actually see some faces. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm tying those ends together like that. So getting my ends, making sure that they're even, and they're even together there, and I'm gonna knot them together. So you can do this with ribbon, guys, like I said. You wouldn't then have to do a knot on the end of the individual bits. You could just cut them at an angle and then they wouldn't fray. And now, da -da -da -da, drum roll. Ta-da! A drawstring bag in a new lovely spotty fabric um, from a monochrome collection. There we go, guys. I so enjoyed making that. I hope you enjoyed joining in with me. And well done to those of you that have been sewing along. Um, um, do let anyone know you who you're thinking, anyone you know that's thinking of having a go at sewing and then they've been put off by our sew along so far because they felt like they're all too hard. This is a great beginner project, guys. So links to the, prod, the, the fabric and also um, the pattern, if you want to have a pattern, um, is in the comment box below, or will be when it's uploaded. Um, and Rosie will be, has put live links to it as well whilst we've been going on. Right guys, time for my soup. Very excited about that. Um, and just before I go, I'm gonna cut, we're back next week. Next week on Monday, we're doing the Edie top, which is a lovely jersey top from work to weekend. On Tuesday, we're doing the Ivy skirt, which is from our magazine, uh, the Lisa Comfort magazine, but we are working on getting that into a kind of the um, product, like a normal sew of a pattern. But anyway, you can buy the digital version of the magazine. And then, I can't remember if it was Wednesday or Thursday, but, and then on another day, we're doing the makeup bag. So then we'll be able to have done both those beginner projects um, together and we can talk a bit more about maybe then how we could do this charity event that we're talking about virtually. Thank you to Rosie for answering your questions. Thanks guys to being so wonderful and lovely to each other and also so participating in saying hi. It makes it all so much more special. It's lovely to see you all, um, or see your names at least and your words go up on my screen. Thanks guys, have lovely weekends and we'll see you next week. Bye.